What is good Tesla family, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I want to break down what's happening with Tesla spy and video the QQQ and a couple of other tickers and break down some very important levels to be watching for what's going on with other factors involving the markets as we have important news coming out with Tesla involving Germany not to mention other big factors but before I break the devil's information before I talk about what data is coming out for today for the markets what you should be watching for let me just mention a couple of things I am firstly not a financial planner so take nothing I say as financial advice and also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo deposit $100, you're guaranteed seven free stocks. The offer ends very soon, in just about 11 days. Anyways, for Tesla, we're actually trading sideways within a range right here. You guys can see we have support at 172. We have resistance at 175. We've been going back and forth and back and forth for the last one and a half days. And the question is, which way will Tesla break? If we do end up losing support right here at our... Uh, 200 EMA, there's going to be a risk of Tesla actually dipping down a little bit lower, which was this 172 area. If we break past the resistance, we could actually try to push back up. So I'll break down what's more likely how Tesla's looking right now, and you should be watching for it once we end up opening. So for now, just know that today is Friday, May 17th, 2024. Happy Friday, guys. The weekend's about to start, but we have one more day of trading left and one more day to get through this before the weekend ends up coming. So at 10.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have a Waller from the Fed giving a speech. This is going to be 45 minutes after the market opens. And besides that, there's not really a whole lot else coming out. The market's continuing to push as we're starting to see more and more of buyers stepping in, but we're approaching some tough resistance, so we want to see what reactions we get. Walmart also reached all-time highs on Thursday for its shares uh, going up about 7% because it beat Wall Street's quarterly sales and revenue expectations, and we had some pretty good guidance for 2024. Uh, on top of this, there's been a lot of ta talk about new tools coming out, cloud-based tools such as Figma, and they're actually going to allow current investors, including current and former employees, to sell their shares in a tender offer. So, so there's been a lot of talk about that, at least making a lot of headlines right now for uh, the markets. <laughs> And then on top of all of this, I just wanted to call out that for the options chain for SPY specifically, we have, and do not forget about this, close to 800,000 calls and over 3.4 million puts expiring. So we'll see what happens with the 4.37 put to call ratio. Uh, going into Tesla, I mean, whatever that could imply for SPY, we'll just have to see with all the puts expiring. But looking at Tesla, there's been a lot of talk about how Tesla's gotten the local council approval to go ahead and continue with the German Geek Factory expansion. I did talk about this in my previous video, but I want to call this out because it's making a lot of headlines again. So basically, they're, they're capable of producing over 500,000 vehicles per year at, in the German Gigafactory right now. They're trying to expand that to closer to 2 million, and they're getting, once again, uh, a lot of optimism thanks to this. There's a lot of people excited about this, and we're starting to see this uh, you know, really improve things for Tesla. But simultaneously, there's also a lot of other people such as environmentalists that are not very, very happy about this. They're fearing that it's going to endanger the region's water supplies. And they're actually vowing that they're going to keep on putting pressure on Tesla, despite the fact that it's expanding its gigafactory. So there's been a lot of talk about this. There's a lot of protests going on as well. They're not really happy about this. They're worried about the environmental effects that this is going to have. One thing that is suspicious in the words of Elon Musk is that they're only going after Tesla, they're not going after other uh, manufacturing companies over there, uh, other German gig, uh, manufacturing fa factories for automakers and such. So that is, once again, something worth noting. But the bottom line is these protests that have been going on, there's no, no necessarily a uh, sign of them basically stopping. So that's something worth noting. It's been more talk about Tesla laying off more employees in California. Uh, they've laid off another 600 employees. They're going to likely continue to do so. So they've laid off employees in Fremont and Palo Alto. And finally, uh, there's been a lot of talk that some important judges have approved another fraud case uh, that's going on right now. So this lawsuit is going to be very important. Uh, Tesla is getting a lot of criticism for whether or not it's uh, been very, very clear about how its FSD has been kind of like advertised and talked about. So we'll see what happens with this. But so far, there are more lawsuits potentially coming out that Tesla could have been committing fraud or not, mis <laughs> misrepresentation or not. So we'll see what happens with that. Not saying that they did. There's just lawsuits suggesting that that's a possibility. And we'll see how these develop over time. Anyways, enough about the news and such. Let's talk about the charts. How are things looking in my personal opinion? I'm going to try to be kind of quick with this part. Tesla is kind of trading just a little bit, but we're still kind of trading sideways in a range. If we lose 172, we're going to be dipping all the way down to fill this gap at 168. If we bounce off this and try to break past 176, this is our 200 EMA. 
we could be pushing all the way back up to 178 and eventually 180. We're still completely range bound going back and forth and back and forth. It's been like this for almost uh, one and a half days. So we'll have to watch and see which way Tesla ends up breaking. So just be very, very patient for now. It could go either way. Uh, there is a little bit of weakness on the four hour. It is, is start, starting to turn a little bit downward. So it might actually get a retest of 172. Watch to see if we get a bounce or not, because we're just completely range bound. And we'll have to see which way we break. So break 176 for bullish. We'll be pushing up higher. If we lose 172, we're going to be tipping all the way down to the 168 area. We'll watch and see and be very, very patient investors during this process. Now for SPY. We're attempting to rebound just a bit, but just be very, very careful because one thing worth knowing about SPY is there could be a change in the trend that's starting to form as we have a high potentially at uh, 531. Now, if I were to take a Fibonacci retracement chart and actually start from the high up here, what you'll find is that uh, the 0.618 retracement happens to align with 530 almost exactly. So that could be significant because you know if we do try to rebound a little bit higher, are we about to establish a lower high? That's going to be the big question we're asking. Are we about to see a big uh, 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 shift in the trend right now? So we have this high right here. We came down a bit. Are we about to like do this? We're going to likely push this resistance, but watch and see how we react to 530. If we get a rejection, we could be starting to sink just a little bit lower and make moves like this as we continue to decline going into next week. So that's what we're going to be looking for. Do we end up pushing to 530 if we do get up here? So I think we might get very close to 530, but will we get a rejection off a lower high relative to 531.5? So I'm <coughs> going to be looking to see the 530s and potential rejection and see how things move from there. For NVIDIA, it's the same thing. We're trying to rebound. Watch this 950 resistance. If we reject uh, below this 958 area, then we could turn back down. If we break past 958, we're going to remain bullish. So I want to make that very, very clear. Break 958 and then we're bullish. But if we come just short of that and rejects, then we could actually remain bearish and still continue to fall. I think we're going to rebound a bit to 950, but watch and see if we get a rejection. That's going to be key for us. Uh, by the way, for SPY, to be bullish, you want to break 531.5. If we break this, then we can be pushed to 532 plus. But if we reject off the 530 area, then we could be sinking back down to 528 or below that. So I'll be watching to see what happens from here. For the QQQ, it's the same thing essentially. If we break past the high right here at the 554 area, we could be pushed for five, uh, 455.5. And if we come just short, if we fail to break that resistance, if we just hit 453 and kind of shuffle here, then we could be dipping back down to lower levels and fill our imbalance below just at 450. So look and see, do we establish a lower high and reject or do we break the high and start pushing? I I, I kind of uh, uh, favor that we're going to push a little bit higher and then end up shuffling in the 453 area then reject. So I do favor that a little bit more. And then for apples, the same thing. We're just continuing to shuffle. Uh, we have 189.25 as supports, and we have 190.5 as resistance. If we lose the 189 area, we could be dipping down to our 220 EMA towards 188. I do see that as a risk, so we'll just have to see how things go from here. With that being said, guys, uh, I know people are interested in super micro. We're actually declining a bit. Uh, we have resistance currently at this imbalance at 932. We have support at 900. We might actually dip towards 900 again, so watch for that. For Amazon, the pre market is looking a little bit weak right now. Watch 183 support. If we lose that, we're going to be tipping to the lower 180s, and we have resistance at 185. But there's a risk of it coming down a bit. For Meta, we're also looking at 469 as support. If we lose this, we're going to be dipping all the way down towards 460. So there is a risk of this, of this bearish divergence leading to a little bit more downside. So we'll just have to see how things go. GME is also kind of flat. It's looking kind of weak. It's continuing to fall towards 20. Still looking more bearish overall. Same thing with AMC, still at 4.5. We do have 4.4 as key support and then 3.92. So we look more bearish. So we'll have to see how things go. All right, guys. So that being said, the market uh, is going to likely push a little bit, but watch and see if we establish a lower high relative to the all time high on SPY and the QQQ. As far as Tesla goes, we're very indecisive right now. There are some signals on that show it might actually dip a little bit, but there's nothing too crazy yet. It's just super indecisive. So give Tesla some time and then watch the levels I called out. Break 176 and we're bullish. And if you have to hold above that, lose 172. If we do dip to 172 and lose it, we're going to turn bearish. We have a gap to fill below in the 168 area. So wait and see, guys. We're still indecisive. I'll be very, very patient for now. Anyways, that's it for the video. Thank you all so much for listening. Have a great day. And I'll be back in a couple of hours. Thanks again and peace out.